ঠিক আছে দেখতে পাচ্ছো পাঁচ ওকে সো থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর কামিং টু দিস স্কুল অফ অ্যাস্ট্রোফিজিক্স কোলোকিয়াম দিস ইজ প্রবাবলি দি লাস্ট কোলোকিয়াম অফ দিস সেমেস্টার আনলেস উই হ্যাভ স্পেশাল স্পিকারস টু কাম আপ এন্ড অলসো থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর দ্য শর্ট নোটিস এন্ড কামিং টু এগে বসাত অডিটোরিয়াম উই হ্যাভ হ্যাড এ চেঞ্জ অফ ভেনিউ I'm very glad to let you know that we have with us Dr. Fatma Nondi today as our speaker. So uh, Dr. Nondi did his bachelor's at Vijayagar Jyotish College. And then he was a master's student at Narendrapur College. And uh, uh, SKS was his professor there. And then he just finished his PhD with uh, Professor Vishwaji Chakraborty at SNB and CBS. We have a lot of speakers from SNB and CBS. And uh, now is actually a postdoc at the Department of Astronomy and Higher Energy Physics uh, with Professor Archon Mujumdar. And uh, Kartu is going to talk about the kink of the gravitational waves in a harmonic oscillator refactor and emergent geometric phase shift. So let's uh, so let's uh, start the talk. Welcome, Kartu. Thank you. Thank you for that. ডিমার্জেন্স অফ geometric question so this is our new investigation which not yet published and before going to detail of this discussion i would like to highlight the plan of my talk okay okay understand okay thank you okay so first i would like to highlight the motivation of my talk then i will discuss brief concept of geometric phase in quantum mechanics then i will discuss uh, some brief introduction of linearized gravitational wave then i will offer some interaction between harmonic oscillator system with gravitational wave at classical level and then i will discuss the quantization so quantum mechanics of this interacting system this is nothing but the interaction between matter point particle with gravitational waves and then i will discuss adiabatic evolution of the system and the geometric phase in heisenberg picture which is not usually observed in literature and then i will finish by some remarkable observation with conclusion so the motivation of my presentation is as you are familiar with the detection of gravitational waves which is nothing but a, a prediction a successful prediction of einstein general theory of relativity classical general theory of relativity in 2015 and it is quite well known that ligo and pargo observation and indicates the typical frequency range of the detected gravitational waves lies between 5 hertz to 20 kilohertz as reported in this literature but if the gravitational wave frequency is below than this detectable range then the lisa indicates that there are some low frequency gravitational wave could be detectable this is a this is a proposed by theoretical prediction but our work is completely based on a new proposal to detect the gravitational wave within the frequency range which is not detectable through this ligo detection so today i will discuss a localized quantum non relativistic system which has a potential to detect this low frequency gravitational wave via detecting the geometrical phase now 
in order to appreciate our work, let us quickly indicate, I mean, encapsulate what is the um, concept of geometric phase discussed by Bill. You see, if you consider some time dependent Schrodinger equation with Hamiltonian depends on some time dependent external parameters, which is slowly varying function of time. And in principle, these parameters form a parameter space which may be compact, may not be compact. And since this is a non-conservative system because it is explicitly depends on time, this Hamiltonian, uh, for the time being, we concentrate ourselves only the one dimensional, that is the first space is two dimensional. Now, since this explicitly time dependent Hamiltonian, this clearly indicates we cannot define a conserved energy. So, only one can do that we can define instantaneous notion of energy eigen spectrum. So, since these parameters, external parameters, are very, very slowly varying function of time, so each instant of time one can define energy spectrum, which satisfies this eigenvalue equation. And this En is nothing but instantaneous energy at if, uh, measured at time t, at instant t. And this sketch psi n is nothing but instantaneous energy eigenstate. We satisfy this normalization concept. All of the quantity is defined at time t. Now, if you focus at t equal to zero, the system situated at state k n, say this is the nth energy eigenstate at time t equal to zero. Now the question is, what happened after time evolution? What is the final state? So final state after time evolution can be defined through this evolution. And this is nothing but the Schrodinger evolution. And since after time evolution, the initial energy eigenstate, since this Hamiltonian is not a, uh, conservative, so this Hamiltonian is a time dependent. So time dependentness of Hamiltonian indicates that the evolved state may not be the eigenstate of the system Hamiltonian. So only one can construct the generic state while by cons considering a suitable linear combination of energy eigenstate at time t with this phase factor. And one can immediately observe this is nothing but a dynamical phase with this appropriate coefficient. But Perry actually observed that in 1984, the, if you consider the parameters are very, very slowly varying function of periodic function of time. So first we consider the adiabatical, varying adiabatical, very, very slowly. So that if you start at t equal to zero with this eigenstate k psi n, the system again persists its nth state after time evolution. So there are no jump from one state to other state, okay? There are no transition. So system is so slowly. So one can arrive the same state at evolved time. See, this is the t equal to zero. This is state defined at t equal to zero. And this is the same state defined at t equal to finite time. Now, this state can be connected with this additional phase over and above this dynamical phase. But what is the explicit nature of this additional phase factor? Very observe, one can observe this kind of additional phase if you consider system passes its in initial state after time evolution. This is nothing but a adiabatic evolution of this system. Now, if you consider in order to appreciate the explicit form of the additional phase factor over and above this dynamical phase. So this dynamical phase is a physical phase factor. You cannot remove from the state vector because it is not an arbitrary phase factor. But the question is, is whether this additional phase factor is an artificial phase factor, which can be removed from by some scaling from the state vector by preserving norm. But point is that if you consider the periodicity of these parameters, R1, R2, and Rn, so in dimensional parameter space, it is slowly varying. Then, if you consider the parameters are slowly varying periodic function with periodicity capital T, so that 
the param so under time evolution the parameters evolve in such a way that it can make a close loop in the parameter space so this is say called this is a, a variation of the parameters over the circuitry in parameter space so using this notion one can immediately arrive at the expressive form of this phase factor you see this phase factor is no longer be dynamical why it is not dynamical because these del del teams cancel each other so that it completely independent this integral of this part is completely independent of the evolution time evolution parameter so that this is not a dynamical because the dynamical phase explicitly depends on the time integral but this phase factor no longer be a time integral so you can recast this integral in terms of the gradient of parameter space indicating gradient r r is a vector in parameter space with this line integral is a closed line integral now if this parameter space is a non trivial geometry this indicates that if parameter space has non trivial geometry this space no longer be zero so since this phase is independent of time evolution so it is that is it is a dynamic not dynamical and since this phase gives rise to the geometrical nature of this parameter space, that is why it is called geometric phase. Now, there are other generalization of this phase factor derived by Wiesek, which is known as a non abelian geometric phase shift. And other kind of generalization obtained by Aranov and Anandan by removing this adiabaticity, but preserving this periodicity. Then again, he arrives some this kind of phase factor. Now, there are other subsequent generalization of this phase. All of these phase factor indicate this phase has some geometrical meaning over and above this dynamical nature. Now, you see, this phase factor is a functional of the closed loop gamma. So, if you deform this circuit in continuous way, this phase factor will be changed. But in some case, when this deformation will not change the total result of this integral, then this phase is known as topological phase. Okay, so there are difference between topological phase and geometrical phase. Now, in order to appreciate this kind of phase factor obtained naturally from the gravitational wave interaction, let us quickly discuss the notion of linearized gravity and the concept of gravitational waves. It's a very brief one. See, the dynamics of space time can be obtained through this very well known action principle. It's called the Einstein Hilbert action. And which is this Einstein Hilbert action is of nothing but a functional of dynamical fields, it's called space time metric. Now, in order to discuss the linearized effect of gravity, so let us quick consider the small perturbation of this G mu over and above this flat mean proxy background. So this H mu nu is nothing but a small perturbation over and above this H eta mu nu, is nothing but a Minkoff metric. And we treat this H mu nu as a perturbation of this flat space time. Now let us define this contravariant form of this H mu nu by this definition. And this is nothing but a well-known formula. So in linearized theory, this Christoffel connection of space time and Riemann tensor in space time can be written in this following form. This is all textbook material. And using this linearization and retain this or this Einstein Hilbert action, only the second order of H, we arrive at this following form. This following form indicates that you see this, this is nothing but a scalar. This this action in both with two kind of symmetry. The symmetry is that if you change the space time by Lorentz with additional translation, so called the Poincare transformation, this action is invariant. So that this action invariant under space time transformation, this action also invariant under some internal transformation. This is called the so called gauge transformation. So this action is completely gauge invariant and Lorentz invariant. Now, if you, pop, I mean, vary, if you vary this action with respect to H mu nu using this Euler Lagrange equation of motion, you arrive at this field equation. Now, 
the existence of gauge symmetry indicates that we cannot obtain a unique solution of this equation. We need to spoil the gauge symmetry. That is why we just consider very well known gauge fixing condition. It's called the transverse stressless gauge condition. And this gauge condition indicates that the all space time components are zero of H nu nu ran to symmetric tensor. And the trace part also be zero. And with this condition, this additional middle term, this is nothing but transversality condition. So this condition, this catch fixing condition, except this factor is nothing but, uh, I mean, this remind us the so-called uh, Coulomb gauge condition for electromagnetic case. Using this gauge fixing condition, we can avoid the redundant degrees of freedom to then arrive at this following wave equation. This is so-called wave equation and depends on the only space time because it's a special component, Ij. Now, the plane wave solution is a stable solution of this equation. And this plane wave solution is just considered the real part of this plane wave. We satisfy this transversality condition. And if we consider the gravitational wave propagate along Z direction, then the epsilon ij is nothing but the polarization tensor of the gravitational wave spot, and which completely hamper the motion of the xy plane. So that in this gauge condition, and if you consider gravitational wave propagate along z direction, you arrive at the polarization tensor in this following structure. See, in general, this h mu nu is a symmetric rank to tensor. So in general, it has nine, I mean, so six components, six independent components due to the symmetry. Now, this additional three constraint with this one constant, so you have four constants. So ultimately, you arrive at six minus four, only two independent freedom. So that we have only two polarization index, which is called plus polarization, and other is a cross polarization. So due to transversality condition, Hij has no non-zero components in xy plane, and epsilon plus and epsilon cross, so-called plus, which satisfy this equation and this cross polarization will satisfy this symmetric condition. So from now we work with this case condition and the gravitational wave which propagate along z direction. Now in order to appreciate the interaction between this gravitational wave of a non-relativistic point particle, let us interested to study the physical effect of gravitational wave. Now you see the single particle, the point is that from equivalence principle, one can say that from a single particle cannot see the effect of gravitational wave. Because from look, if you consider only local inertial frame, then you can absorb the Christoffel connection. So this is a free falling. So you can ignore the, you can absorb the effect of gravity by considering local inertial frame. So, this is a fact of strong equivalence principle, at least classically. Now, to see the effect of gravitational wave, we need to consider two massive objects. So you can ignore the effect of gravity from the geodesic motion by considering local inertial frame. But you cannot ignore the effect of gravity from geodesic deviation, because the ge ge geodesic deviation based on the curvature tensor instead of Christoffel connection. You see the Christoffel connection no longer be a tensor. So that is why in order to see the effect of gravitational wave, we need to consider two massive particle and measure the geodesic deviation between them. So that instead of considering the appropriate motion of a particle, test particle, we can consider the relative motion of a test particle with respect to other test particle. So this is our so-called geodesic deviation equation. And Q, Q is nothing but the separation vector between two geodesic lines. And x mu is nothing but a geodesic, I mean, this is nothing but a trajectory of a test particle which satisfied the geodesic equation. Now, this is our dynamical equation, which can encode the effect of gravity in terms of Riemann tensor, which is nothing but it no longer be zero. If you consider local inertial term, Riemann tensor cannot be zero. The current, I mean, Christoffel connection can be zero. Because Riemann tensor is nothing but a difference between uh, Christoffel connection with their derivatives. Now, our interest to study the 
non-relativistic test particle, what is the effect of gravitational wave on non-relativistic test particle? So if you consider very slowly moving test particle, then for slowly moving test particle, all spatial component can be ignored. Only temporal components are high. And for slowly moving, moving test particle, one can consider the proper time just identical with the coordinate times, just effect of slowly moving case, non-relativistic limit, the, our geodesic deviation equation will take this following form. Now you see this following form spoil the space-time covariant nature because it completely depends on the spatial components. And this reminds us the usual form of Newton's law of motion. Because you can interpret this left hand side is nothing but acceleration, and this right hand side can be interpreted as the effect of force on the gravitational wave, so called is called tidal force. Yeah. Okay. So this Q is nothing but a relative coordinate between two passive particles instead of their local coordinates. Now, at TT gauge, there is geodesic deviation equation for non relativistic test particles. The equation will take this following form. So this is nothing but our Newton's law of motion. Now, this equation indicates the gravitational wave provides some a force law. Now, if you consider very long wavelength approximation of the gravitational wave, so gravitational wave propagate along z direction, then we can consider only h ij component is non-zero, as you observed the from the polarization matrix. Only xy component, xx, xy, yy, yx. All z components, x component are zero. So only xy motion. So if gravitational wave propagate along z direction, only perpendicular motion will affect it. Now, for long wavelength approximation, you can consider this e to the power i k plane wave, but just one, only temporal parts are So therefore, this gravitational fields hij is now considered as a function of only time instead of space time because from plane wave the, the spatial part of the plane wave is approximate to one only the time part component to survive so e to the power i omega t will survive so this is function of time and this is a periodic function of time because it satisfies the wave equation so naturally we arrive at some periodic parameters now our force law now recast following form by multiplying the mass. So this is standard Newton's law of motion. And this describes the relative motion of test particle with mass m lying on the wave front of gravitational waves. The observation is that at TT gauge, long wavelength approximation, the whole analysis effectively described by Newtonian equation of motion. And the component of gravitational TT gauge, which produce a tidal effect in the equation of motion, of which given mass m. Now, in order to see the effect, the non-trivial effect of gravitational waves, let us consider some more general form of equation of motion. So let us consider the test particle which are freely falling. Now they connected with vibrating stream, vibrating stream. Okay. So now this is so-called the vibrating detector. And gravitational wave is passing through the perpendicular plane of this detector. I mean, harmonic oscillator, just, just the, um, uh, the mass connected to its plane. So then equation of motion reduce this, this is the, this right hand side, you see this right hand side is nothing but the effect of gravitational waves. And this additional part is a mechanical force. It's not a part of gravitational wave, it's a mechanical force. So you consider as a mechanical detector, which involves some external force. So this is nothing but a test to test particle moves in presence of gravitational wave, which is connected with vibrating stream. Now we can most generalize condition. This omega is a frequency of vibration, which is now considered as anisotropic in two direction, x, y direction is not vibrating the same direct, with same frequency. And which is also considered as a slowly varying periodic function of time. You see, we have only equation of motion, which encode the effect of gravitational waves. Now, in order to study the quantum theory of test particle, 
localized hepatic stress particle. Why it is localized? Because it uh, involves some additional force, harmonic oscillator force. So if you consider some localized quantum mechanical system in presence of gravitational wave, we want some Hamiltonian. But in order to obtain this Hamiltonian, we can easily observe this equation of motion, this interpret as equation of motion, which can be derivable from the given Lagrangian. So this is this is the inverse problem. In many cases, we have some Lagrangian, we can immediately observe the equation of motion. But here, primarily you obtain equation of motion. Now we are looking for some Lagrangian which satisfy the same equation of motion. And fortunately, we arrive at this following form of the Lagrangian. And now, this Lagr if once you arrive this Lagrangian, you can immediately observe this is the form of Hamiltonian. This Hamiltonian is a very nice form because this reminds us an interaction between charged particle, the form of the Hamiltonian, this kinetic term of the Hamiltonian reminds us the interaction between charged particle with external uniform magnetic field, just P minus E A by C. Instead of A here, we observe this. Uh, H i j dot because H i j dot is nothing but a part of Christoffel connection. So this Hamiltonian is very close to the form of a charged particle moving in in uniform magnetic field along the z direction. Now this is the mostly classical model. Now if you quantize our system partially, semi-classical in a sense that we quantize only the phase particle phase phase variable promoted by operator. But gravitational part is still classical because our gravitational wave is still classical. There are no concept of graviton still. So this Hamiltonian can be promoted at the level of operator with elevating this phase space variable by crowning hat. Now you immediately observe that this system Hamiltonian can be rewrite in this following form. Now, you see the system Hamiltonian describes again the relative motion of two states particle connected with spring, which is slowly varying function of time in presence of gravitational wave passing through the z direction, along the z direction. Now, you see this additional term, the effect of gravitational waves, and this is nothing but the effect of mechanical force, this is mechanical external force. Then, then this Hamiltonian, now this Hamiltonian is depends on some parameter, time dependent parameters, and their time dependence parameters is coming from the gravitational waves component itself, and other time dependent parameters is external frequency parameters. Since gravitational waves component is a periodic function of time, and we by hand consider the external frequency also a free periodic function of time. Now, you see, as we already mentioned, we want to study the effect of low frequency gravitational waves interaction. So if you consider very, very low frequency gravitational waves, the time period is very large. Uh, yes. It's classical. Just parameter. Just parameter. Just. Right. Just the magnetic field charge particle moving in a magnetic magnetic field is a parameter. Mean, classical. Right? Yeah. So then we we are in a good position to study the effect of to study the uh, effect of adiabaticity. Because the adiabaticity coming from considering the low frequency gravitational waves, become, because the, if you consider very low frequency, then the time period is very large. So this periodic function varying adiabatically. And by we by hand consider this is the adiabatic periodic function of time, the frequency. And the order of adiabaticity should be matches with the gravitational waves parameters. Now, for linearly polarized gravitational wave, this is the form of Hij. This is the form of Hij where chi t is nothing but the amplitude of the gravitational wave, which is a periodic function of time. And for our case, it's slowly varying periodic function because the low frequency case. And this is uh, this already discussed for Meissner Thorn Wheeler book. Now, if you explicitly 
write down this Hamiltonian in terms of the polarization tensor, you arrive at this following form. This is the this is kinetic term, this is the potential term, an oscillated term. And you this is nothing but the so-called uh, dilatation terms or one more squeezing term. And this is so-called two more squeezing term. And alpha, beta, all time-dependent parameter defined in this following form. See. Polarization case with TT gauge. You see, this beta, as you consider the periodic function of time, slowly varying periodic function of time, and this gamma delta depends on the chi dots. And chi dot is part of the gravitational waves. And for low frequency gravitational waves, this gamma and delta is by def definition is a slowly varying function of time, which is periodic. Now, in order to contrast this Hamiltonian, we can immediately define this ladder operator, this exotic form of the ladder operator. And we can rewrite this Hamiltonian in terms of the quadratic Hermitian form, in terms of the number operator, and this is the uh, ground, uh, ground state energy shift. And this is the normal mode frequency, which should be positive definite in order to obtain the bounded from below system. Now, our system Hamiltonian can be uh, considered as a periodic function of time, depends on some external parameters. Some part of the external parameters is a, a defined from the frequency and other is a defined from the gravitational wave components. And if you want to study the adiabatic evolution of this system Hamiltonian, by evolving this parameter space, the parameter space define alpha, beta, delta, gamma. Now slowly varying periodic function, the both, I mean, instead of uh, alpha, is uh, beta, delta, gamma is a pro the periodic function of time with, with periodicity capital T. This is a periodicity of gravitational law. It's a very, very large for low frequency case. So that the system Hamiltonian change higher in parameters in such a manner that it makes a closed circuit in the parameter space and we satisfy the periodicity condition. Now. Right, right. Uh, I will discuss in conclusion. Mm. <laughs> so this is because it is a geometric term. Since it is a geometric term, so this time part already cancel each other. So you see, just integral. So in case you want to integrate over the whole period, the time dependent part, the so integration, it's apparently it looks like a time integral, but you can convert in the line, close line integral. So then there are no part of this of cancellation. Actually, actually the point, actually the, actually the point is that is that is the meaning of geometrical term because it is exclusively independent of time variation. Because if it is a dynamical, then your conclusion is correct. But in geometrical case, your expression of the geometrical phase is just nothing but a line integral over the parameters. So it's not a time time dependence. Uh, time dependence automatically cancelled by the integrand and integral uh, measure of the integration. Yes, R is the parameters. The vector in the parameter space. R is the vector in the parameter space. Yes. 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 Right. This is periodic, this is periodicity of the wave. This has to be a periodic function because delta gamma is a function of h, i, j, or alpha is a time independent. Yes. This is the this is the beta. Gamma delta. So your parameter space effectively is your parameter space is four dimension, thus your geometrical phase is obtained in submanifold with three dimension. So, 
মানে আমি বলতে চাইছি যে প্যারামিটার স্পেসটা এফেক্টিভলি ফোর ডাইমেনশন বিকজ বাট দা ইভোলিউশন ইজ ডিফাইন অন দা সাব ম্যানিফোল্ড হুইচ ইজ এমবেডেড ইন দা ফোর ডাইমেনশন বিকজ বিকজ এফেক্টিভ প্যারামিটার স্পেস ইজ দা টাইম ভ্যালু ইজ দা 3D হুইচ এমবেডেড ইন ফোর ডাইমেনশন জাস্ট হুইচ ইজ আ এগেইন ইজ দা ট্রিভিয়াল পার্ট ইজ নট কন্ট্রিবিউট এনিথিং দ্যাট ইজ ইয়ার পার্ট জিওমেট্রিক্যাল স্পেস right right but the point is that yes yes that is that is the yes yes so that is the consideration of our case because yes this is the consideration that one i mean if the periodicity of gravitational wave path matches with the periodicity of the oscillator path then we have some kink that this kink is geometric okay. might be related might be if it is related right okay. that is why it is a king mane i mean eta resonance hobe oi oi muhurte jodi eta hobe so uh, this is the periodic part of the hamiltonian and uh, you can as you know if we have some if we have some creation and corresponding annihilation operator which are especially time dependent we can immediately study the evolution by considering heisenberg equation of motion okay and this heisenberg equation of motion for uh, first mode will take this following form it's the effective parameters uh, defined in following fashion okay okay so this is the evolution for a1 i mean modes and similarly one can study the a1 dagger evolution for a1 or the hermitian conjugate of a1 and same way one can study the other degrees of freedom or other modes equation for other modes so we have so coupled of differential equation in order to solve this coupled differential equation we consider the adiabatic approximation because our time dependent parameters all are slowly varying function of time so we can take the advantage of this consideration and after using adiabatic approximation i mean in principle one can exactly solve this coupled differential equation but our concern what is the effect of adiabatic approximation so it is sufficient to work with the adiabatic approximation in order to solve this coupled differential equation now if you we can if you solve this coupled differential equation we get this following form of this mohr's operator at time at time period t which connected with the mohr's operator at zero time with this additional phase now you can immediately observe that this phase this additional phase is depends on the explicit form of the frequency and this is depends on the time integral that is it is a dynamical and this additional phase factor over and above this first phase is no longer be a time integral because this is nothing but a total derivative and when you integrate it over time you can immediately rewrite it you can immediately rewrite this ddt in terms of the gradient in parameter space and convert this time integral as a line integral over the parameter space of closed circuit gamma since this additional phase factor explicitly independent of the time evolution t that is why yes 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 
Sorry, I don't want to give point. Let's see the time dependent. पैरामिटर स्पेस so then you just consider the i mean then this omega is a function of alpha beta gamma which is our parameters and you consider the integration over the parameters only not time so this this freedom indicates that this phase has some geometrical meaning this is not a dynamical phase because it explicitly because this phase is not depend on, depends how the evolution is, is slow or fast so that is why it is a geometrical because it explicitly independ of the evolution parameter because but a in case ta ekhane kora jabe na because this is explicitly dynamical you cannot rewrite this time integral in terms of some other space integral but you can immediately observe this in this integral can be rewrite in this following form now since it is a line integral you can immediately rewrite this integral in terms of the surface integral by using the stokes theorem and you can immediately observe this is nothing but a flux and this is nothing but a flux you can immediately observe from this one so flux from the uh, circuit gamma and in this flux in the parameter space so this geometrical sorry. anyway so this this uh, expression of additional phase factor indicates as we immediately observe some new phase over and over because both of them explicitly uh, depends on the time when you consider that in time integral but if you rewrite because because this is our and intention yes yes we yes. have right one part one one part is indicates that time int integration over time period when you consider omega is the time dependent now second line you consider the integration over the parameter space where omega itself is a function Ta omega is a function of time first case yes. in second case omega itself is a function but omega right 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 Uh, actually, actually, the point is that no, no. The point is that uh, when you consider the time integration over the uh, the this time period, in, this apparently looks like this uh, in omega. It it is explicitly depends on time. It is result of the integration. But 
when you're rewriting the, in this following fashion, your omega itself a part of variable. Omega itself a part of variable. Suppose the integration over fx dx. Now, x is a function of time. x can be a function of time. But when you integrate over x itself, you cannot change the effect of x, t on it. So, you can immediately observe this is a phase which explicitly depends on the shape of the circuit or shape of the loop in parameter space. Uh, this gives rise to the geometrical meaning of the parameter space. And this additional phase factor, this additional phase factor uh, can be interpret our uh, geometrical phase. And now some observation can be obtained. You see this geometrical phase factor uh, depends on this depends on the gamma. The so gamma is the parameters, the part of the parameters space. So now, if you consider only the plus polarization, just consider the cross polarization is zero. Because gravitational wave has two components, plus polarization, cross polarization. If you switch off the cross polarization, then delta part is zero. Delta means this part. But still gravitational, phase, sorry, still geometrical phase will survive, non-zero. But if you switch off the class polarization, because the gamma explicitly depends on the class polarization. So if you switch off the class polarization term, this gamma part will be explicitly zero. So this total phase is collapsed. So this clearly indicates that geometrical phase is nothing but a hallmark of class polarization of gravitation. And in order to appreciate the existence of this gravitational uh, geometrical term, one can make other observation because our Hamiltonian depends on kinetic quadratic term in kinetic energy, quadratic term in potential energy and other parts. And you can explicitly rewrite for absence of cross polarization. You can immediately observe this Hamiltonian can be decomposed into different part. One is the first mode, another is the second mode, H1 plus H2. And this H1, H2 explicitly depends on this symmetric term of Q and P. And this symmetric term explicitly time reversible broken term. Whenever you consider a time reversible broken Hamiltonian under adiabatic evolution, one may arrive at this kind of phase factor. So this is the sufficient condition to obtain geometrical phase. So whenever your system Hamiltonian broken time reversible symmetry due to presence of some extra term, and this extra term, you see this, 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 time reversible broken term is nothing but a source of gravity, uh, geometrical phase because this gamma is coefficient of time reversible broken term. And this time reversible broken term coefficient explicitly uh, occur at the level of geometrical phase. So if you switch off this gamma, this uh, geometrical phase will come. So they are in intimately connected. And in order to appreciate the appearance of this phase, one can make its other argument uh, called the group theoretical argument that one can rewrite our system Hamiltonian in terms of this kind of new generator, and this generator a form a closed Lie algebra is called SU11. So whenever our system Hamiltonian explicitly depends on some Lie algebra generators, which for closed a group, I mean closed the algebra, then system under adiabatic evolution, system Hamiltonian exhibit a very and this kind of situation first observed by Binayak Dr. Uh, and Gautam Ghosh. The conclusion is that the result obtained can readily be converted to the more familiar form. You see, our very phase or geometrical phase obtained at the level of operators. So that is why it is called the Heisenberg picture of the very. So one can readily convert this geometrical phase at the level of state vector by going from the Heisenberg picture to Schrodinger picture. In other words, this additional phase in the detectors or function is solely due to the plus polarization mode of the gravitational wave. And in absence of the gravitational wave, there are only usual dynamical phase. 
as a final remark, the emergent nature of gravitational induced geometrical gravitational wave induced geometrical phase may be detectable in principle, but we are still far from the providing the qualitative measurement of this phase. In fact, this geometrical phase may be detectable uh, from the phase difference of suitable design interference experiment because geometrical phase or very phase only observed in interference experiment. So if you interfere to different modes of the oscillator, so to uh, the phase of A1 modes and phase of the A2 modes, if you interfere them, then there exists some interference term which encode the effect of gravitation or induced geometrical phase. So that is why we call this is the king of gravitational waves induced geometrical phase. Yep. So that, and I would like to thank Professor Sujitana uh, Chatterjee. I would like to thank my teacher, uh, Professor Shogun Kumar Tonda. And I would like to thank my collaborator, Dr. Shayan Kumar Pal and Dr. Vivas Ranjan Mandi, who is a professor of IIT. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Question from the audience. Any questions? Yes, yes, sir. So, uh, this moving uh, setting thing you are talking about, and we started with the transition frequency like the less than a half. So, but that will depend on the your calculation it depends on the relative to mega. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. So is it possible to do the same thing for higher frequency? Higher frequency of the gravitation No. Because of for higher frequency, we, uh, we cannot use the adiabatic nature. There may be other manifestation of uh, this. It's all related to so, but phase is, is no, 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 this, uh, this phase is ultimately it's not depends on the uh, nature of dynamics because it's not depends on the how slow it's going. Because that is why the geometrical. Geometrical means it cannot be more. It is not then this is also applicable for high frequency as well. That's nice. Uh, you can say you can extend for the high frequency range, but uh, maybe we need to change our methodology. Of course, you because this you can you can realize this adiabatic condition for other generalization of this phase, other generalization of this phase. Yes. Yes. Uh, slow compared to this. Yes. No, but our consideration is based on this gravitational wave frequency is very small. That is why you, you this this indicates this uh, time period uh, compared to detectable range of frequency. Detectable range by the what? Yes. Uh, because your, uh, your is not very important. No, no, no. You have to define what is the Actually, uh, this question of adiabaticity uh, may be. Okay. No. Okay, this question of adiabaticity is maybe relaxed for other generalization in order. But I mean, I, this is the one one of the way to obtain this phase. This adiabaticity, there is slowness. This is one of the way. More rigid condition is the periodicity. Periodicity is must necessary for our purpose. But this adiabatic condition, the adiabatic evolution, may be uh, withdrawn in when we opt obtain the final form of the phase, maybe because this ultimate form is especially independent of the time condition. For example, the time T, capital T. So because capital T is a time period. So this time is period of what? Time period of the gravitational waves. Time period of the gravitational waves. Right. 
Because if you consider the single particle geodesic motion, this geodesic motion involves the Stoffel connection. So you can take some other coordinate system where you can immediately absorb the effect of gravity. So this advantage is called equivalence principle. So from equivalence principle, you can say if you have a freely falling particle and if you Sit on the freely falling. If you if you have an observer which, you, which also parallel to fall with respect to the test particle, they cannot see the effect of that. If you consider the relative motion with respect to the other observer, then you can see the what is the effect of that. Instead of that, that is a instead of geodesic equation, we consider the geodesic deviation equation. Uh, so Uh, 